The service of evening prayer for this 12th Tuesday after Pentecost begins on page 117 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you'd like to follow along. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, in the fifth chapter, starting at the thirtieth verse. Jesus said, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will be accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this evening is Canticle 17, the song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The scripture passage for this 12th Tuesday after Pentecost takes us into the heart of the Gospel according to St. John. We're early on in the Gospel. Jesus has begun his earthly ministry, but he's finishing in talking about John the baptizer. He's talking about what God has already promised and has set up and is now being fulfilled. But we remember that these readings that we have from the daily office after Pentecost 
are as much about us as we embody the word of Jesus and not just point to the historical figure or to point to the events of the liturgical church year. They're for us to remember what it means for to follow along with Jesus, follow along the way of love and the way of this new life that he bids us to follow. So what is he doing in this particular scene? We've seen Jesus' earthly ministry go immediately, as John tells the good news, into preaching, teaching, healing. He has just healed a man who was paralyzed, and he has some controversy stirred up because he healed on the Sabbath. And those who are in authority at the time are questioning, by whose authority would he do these things, especially breaking the laws of their society or their culture, their religious norms, by healing on the Sabbath. Jesus is talking about what does it mean in terms of our identity and our purpose and our whole relationship to follow the will of God as opposed to just those things which we create in ourselves. We hear this particular stirring line that's given to us in our gospel passage this evening. I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now we may skip over that line rather quickly, but in that one very line is a powerful truth for our lives as disciples. I seek not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It takes us beyond what is comfortable, definitely what is expected, and into the heart of what God's yearning is for our life. Sometimes that takes us to an unfamiliar place, it definitely takes us beyond the way we've always done things before. It takes us even beyond the expectations we would have of how God wants us to act in the world by ourselves or even with others. It takes us beyond the limitations we've placed on ourselves or others about how God would have us act and do more for God's purposes. What are those purposes? Wholeness of life. That healing story that precedes tonight's reading cannot be ignored. That will of God should supersede anything we create as human beings in terms of rules and expectations of ourselves about who, what, when, where, even how, to realize the whole purpose of God is that fullness or full life, right life with God. To do the will of him who sent me and not my own will is to live in an entirely selfless sort of way. This is stirring news, not just to those who are questioning Jesus, but sometimes even to ourselves. It takes us beyond the norms. It takes us beyond the comfort. It definitely takes us beyond the familiarity of our own times and ways of acting and being. And it truly in, involves our whole being to discern or prayerfully consider what is God's yearning in this case, in this time, in this place. In our own time and place, it may be asking deeper questions about who is my neighbor and how do I care for my neighbor, even and especially when they're different from us. We have this good news, as John tells us, to remind us of the journey that we're on goes far beyond the limits or even the horizons of our own imaginations into God's very purposes. And following God will go farther than we ever possibly could imagine. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For this evening, let us use suffrages B. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of Mary, the Holy Godbearer, Thomas, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you revealed in Scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And this week, let us have compassion on those who have commended themselves to our prayers, remembering especially Benny, Bob, David, Gary, Jim, Jane, Lauren, Marette, Phil, Sandy, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus. I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings offered at this time. For all these and those we've named in our hearts, let us give over to God as we offer the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving and kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to him whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can desire or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forevermore. Amen. <laughs>